제가 먼저 세션 소개를 하겠습니다. Okay, we can get it started. 안녕하세요. 한반도 국제평화 포럼 PMI 제시 시작하겠습니다. Thank you for coming to the Korea Global Forum for Peace. The KMI session will begin. Session of Korea Global Forum for Peace 2021. I'm Inju Yoon, research fellow from Korea Maritime Institute. Let me briefly introduce the background of the session. The theme of this session is inter-Korean cooperation in maritime and fisheries sector for implementing sustainable development goal 14, which is also known as life below water. Marine ecosystem surrounding the Korean peninsula is organically interconnected and requires close cooperation. Not only two Koreas, but international society as a whole have a keen interest in this area in terms of marine ecosystem, environment, and fisheries. However, not only development cooperation of international society, but also inter-Korean cooperation in maritime and fisheries sector have been relatively marginalized than other sectors. Therefore, today we have invited domestic and international experts in these areas to discuss necessities and ideas on international and inter-Korean cooperation. Today, we have three presentations and discussion. In order to facilitate three presentations, I will produce, uh, I will introduce each presenter and remind them to make it in 15 minutes. After these presentations, I will pass the microphone to Dr. Kim jong Dok, who is the chair and moderator of the discussion. Now we will start looking at the marine ecosystem from regional seas perspective, which is Northwest Pacific area. First the presentation will be delivered by Dr. Liu Ning, program officer at LOPAP. The presenter from LOPAP have changed from Dr. Yegor Polovic to Dr. Liu. Dr. Liu, please open, take, open your microphone and introduce the current status and work of NOPAP. Okay, Th thank you very much. Uh, now I share my presentation. Can you see it? Can you see my presentation? Yes, we can see. Okay. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, colleagues. Uh, my name is Liu Ning. I'm the program officer of NOPAP. And the NOPAP coordinator, Jörg uh, Volovic, uh, could not attend this important forum due to other commitment. So I will introduce the activity of NOPAP. Uh, NOPAP is part of a regional seas program. The regional seas program launched in 1974, following the 1972 UN conference on the human environment. Regional seas program it's one of three pillars of regional ocean governance. The other two pillars are regional fisheries organization and the large marine ecosystems. Around the world, there are 18 regional seas programs. 143 countries join this uh, mechanism. And Regional states program provide intergovernmental frameworks to address the degradation of oceans and the seas at a regional level through regular meetings of governing bodies, senior officials, as well as technical bodies. And the regional states program provide an expression of common regional priorities and the platforms for taking actions. Among the 18 uh, regional states program, seven are administered by UNEP. So NOPAP is one of them. And the seven are not administered by UNEP, but uh, established under the auspice of UNEP. And the four uh, were established independently. Uh, no pub was set up in 1994. Uh, we have four member states, and they are China, 
Japan, Korea, and Russia. Uh, the overall pro goal is to protect marine and the coastal environment. And uh, the map shows the geographic coverage of NOPAP. You can notice that uh, part of China, part of uh, uh, Russia, and uh, the whole Korea, and the most part of Japan uh, fall in the geographic scope of NOPAP. And there are three complementary goals of NOPAP, uh, including the control, halting, and the prevention of any further degradation and the deterioration of the coastal and the marine environment and its resources. The recovery and the rehabilitation of coastal and the marine environments that have been degraded and which still have the potential for such a recovery. The long-term sustainability of coast and the marine environment quality and the resources as assets for the present and the future human populations of the region. The no pop medium term strategy for 2018 to 2023 include five priority areas. They are support ecosystems based integrated coastal and the river basin management, assess the status of marine and the coastal environment, prevent and reduce land and sea-based pollution, conserve marine and coastal biodiversity, and strengthen, strengthen regional cooperation. The mechanism of operation of NOPAP is like this. So we have intergovernmental meeting, which is the decision-making body. And we have four regional activity centers, each based in each member state. And they implement the NOPAP activity. We have regional, active, regional coordinating unit, RCU, uh, serve a secretariat function. And the nominated national focal points work with us. And we also closely cooperate with research institute and NGOs. And the special monitoring coastal environment assessment regional activity center is located in Toyama, Japan. And this is one of the four regional activity centers I just introduced. Uh, they work on harmful algal blooms, remote sensing of marine environment, marine biodiversity, assessment of eutrophication, marine litter, and the microplastics. The data and the information network regional activity center, uh, the abbreviation is DINRAC, is located in Beijing, China. Their work includes annual summary of major marine environmental data, collection of information on endangered, threatened species, compilation of marine environmental standards, and they also uh, host the Northwest Pacific Regional Node of Global Partnership on Marine Litter. The Marine Environmental Emergency Preparedness and the Response Regional Activity Center is located in Daejeon, Korea. They promote regional cooperation in responding to marine pollution emergencies. And they organize a full-scale oil and hazardous and noxious subsistence spill response exercises regularly. And they also collect the data, conduct assessment, and share best practice in this regard. And they work on marine litter management as well, focusing on fishing, shipping, and the tourism industries. This is the example. Um, they organize uh, the joint oil response exercises. And the Pollution Monitoring Regional Activity Center and Operation is POMRAC. It's based in Vladivostok, Russia. 
They work on target indicators for ecological quality objectives, persistent toxic substances, persistent organic pollutants, and microplastics. They also conduct research on marine spatial planning and ecosystem-based management, integrated coastal planning and management. And they produce the reports on marine environment status in this region. And the third version is ongoing. The NOPAP Regional Action Plan on Marine Litter was adopted in 2008. The member states uh, work closely in prevention, monitoring, and the removal of marine litter. Uh, we have organized annual workshops to share uh, the best practice and, and also the policy development, the information on, on investment. Uh, we organized the international coastal cleanup campaigns uh, thing, since 2006. Uh, in different countries. And also we work closely with NGOs uh, for this work. Uh, some su uh, some su uh, successful examples of cooperation in the NOPAP region include the, the broader consultative process on various topics, cooperation on Agenda 2020, involvement through UNEP in Global Ocean Agenda, close links, regional networks with national governments, good cooperation on specific topic, such as monitoring, assessment, pollution reduction, and other issues. So the NOPAP helped build the friendly atmosphere of trust between people and the countries. So, uh, this is the brief introduction uh, of NOPAP. And uh, thank you very much for your listening. Over back to your chair. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Liu. Your presentation helped us to understand the marine ecosystem and a global and regional perspective. And what is going to and uh, where we are heading to in terms of regional cooperation in the surrounding seas. Thank you again. You're welcome. Now we are going to shift our focus on fisheries, especially fisheries, inland fisheries of the DPRK. Next presentation is going to be delivered by Mr. Miao Weimin, Aquaculture Officer at FAO. He has been an expert in inland fisheries for a long time and will share his knowledge and experience in the DPRK and ROK-related projects. Mr. Miao, please take the microphone. Thank you, Chair. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see. Uh, good evening, everybody, uh, particularly to the friends in, in Korea and also in, in Japan. First of all, I wish to thank the forum and the session organizer for inviting FAO to participate in this very important event. Uh, it is also my great pleasure to share uh, the FAO's work in the past in supporting the effort of the democratic People's Republic of Korea in developing their aquaculture sector for food security and nutrition and economic growth. So my, uh, I will also try to touch a little bit on the prospect for the future collaboration between the Republic of Korea and also FAO in how to support the DPR Korea to develop their aquaculture sector So my presentation will be basically cover the need for aquaculture development in the country, the FAO post assistance with DPR Korea in developing the aquaculture sector, 
Uh, what are the major constraints and challenges in developing the sector in a country with the current situation? And what are the areas identified by the government of the DPR Korea in developing aquaculture? And uh, the last but not least, what are the potential uh, collaboration areas between FAO and the Republic of Korea in supporting uh, the DPR Korea in developing the aquaculture sector? So we all know well, uh, DPR Korea is a typically mountainous country as part of the Korean peninsula. So the country has rather limited arable land for crop farming, which account for only about 20% of its land area and with not a very high productivity. So the country also has typical arid and cold climate, which is not so favorable for the livestock production in the country. However, the country has a long coastal line with good natural environment in both its east and the west. So the total coastline range 2,500 kilometers. That is very, very long compared with the, the size of the country. So therefore, fish and other aquatic animals are traditionally important to animal food for the people in the country. So marine capture fisheries used to be the major, or currently is still the major source of aquatic animal food in the, in the country, which account for 95% of the total capture fisheries production in the country in 1994. Uh, the country, however, has not reported regularly its fisheries production to FAO after 1960. That's a few country uh, which are currently not regularly reporting to FAO. So the, the last, uh, for long period reporting stopped in 1962. In that year, the country reported 282,000 metric tons of marine capture fisheries production. So after that one, the FAO is basically trying to estimate the fisheries production from the country, I don't know in, in which way. Uh, with the estimation, the highest production was in 1982, almost 1 million metric tons. Then during 1994 and 1997, the country reported its marine capture fisheries production to FAO. But during this period, we observed a very sharp decline of the marine catch. So it dropped to 216,000 metric tons in 1997. Compared with 1994, the production lost nearly 40%. So the, 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 the figure, the graph below, is it, basically based on the FAO estimate. So all these figures are estimated figure, but I don't know how they was estimated. But the actual reported data is this rectangular area, only four years. So we can see there was a continuous rapid decline in the marine capture fisheries production. Current improved food supply and nutrition of the people has become one of the top agenda of the government after suffering from economic sanction, embargo, and natural disasters for many years. And the increased production of aquatic animals is among the top priority. The country government also recognized the difficulty to increase, even to maintain the supply of aquatic animals from marine capture fisheries during various kinds of reasons. So the aquaculture has been identified by the government as a priority approach to improve the animal food supply in the country. So the top, pro top government authority, particularly the Supreme Marshal, uh, Mr. Kim Jong-un, set a target for aquaculture development of fisheries products of 1.5 million metric tons, basically aquatic animals in uh, 2016. So the target is for 2021, that's exactly this year. But whether this target is achievable, is quite a question because uh, that needs a lot, a lot of things. Then in 2016, uh, we conducted a, a sector review for the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. So in that review, the 
Ministry of Fisheries, they estimated, estimated the total national aquaculture production is a, more or less like 400,000 to 500,000 metric tons of freshwater fish plus 25,000 of marine bivalves. So this figure is based on the MOFI statistic data. Because the country don't have the consolidated national fisheries data. So the MOFI data only account for about 30 to 40% of the national total. So, uh, but uh, personally, I have a little bit question about this freshwater aquaculture production, uh, considering the resources. And also what they reported during two, 1994 uh, to 1997, it's 70,000 to 80,000 of tons of aquaculture production. So uh, that's a huge gap. So we can see the currently set target for the aquaculture development uh, has a very huge gap with the actual production. But we can see from the pictures below that the Supreme Marshal uh, has visited many fish farm units during 2014 to 2019. That will demonstrate how the government is really uh, paying high attention to the, to the aquaculture development. So uh, according to the data from the Ministry of Fisheries, they provide some potential area for the expansion of aquaculture in, in the Democratic People's Republic. So this table shows the, the, the considered the potential area for expansion of aquaculture in the marine environment. So that covers both the East Coast and the West Coast with a total area of 237,000 hectares for the different species uh, commodities. So in addition to the abundant marine resources and good environment, the country also has rather rich inland water resources, which comprises rivers, lakes, reservoirs, and some uh, man-made uh, earthen pond, fish pond areas. So the total estimated inland water body suitable for aquaculture development is around 70,000 hectares. When they say suitable, uh, that is, I don't know what is really kind of a criteria. That include 850, 850 hectares of fish farm. So the inland rivers, lakes, and reservoirs, there have, actually has good potential for cage culture, uh, part near, also near Pinyon City. So uh, the country, the government has been making requests to FU continuously uh, since 2000 uh, for FU to support the country's effort to develop aquaculture sector. So to respond to that kind of request, so FU has been implemented a number of projects in the country to support, but these projects are basically what we call the technical cooperation program project was limited funding resources and a limited, a relatively short uh, project period. So this project covered the different species, commodities, and, and areas. So it included demonstration of tilapia overwintering technology, the capacity building in sea cucumber and scallop seed production, and also the polyculture of uh, kelp, sea cucumber, and scallop, uh, in the, one of the important uh, marine fisheries and aquaculture cooperative located in Hong Wong. Then the, capture, uh, the capacity building in marine fish, particularly turbot, seed production and farming technology. The capacity building in ox shell and sea urchin seed production and uh, to strengthen the uh, inland cage and fish, pen fish culture uh, mainly the carbs, uh, farming, and related seed production. So currently, FU still have an aquaculture project implementing to improve the marine bivalve aquaculture practice in the southern uh, Hamyon and uh, Kangwon province. So that includes farming, post-harvesting, value-adding, capacity building, uh, facility innovation. Uh, so you can see all the project with only between more or less like 200 to 300,000 US dollars of total budget. 
So the FAO assistance to the country in developed aquaculture are basically focused on, on those areas with, uh, with different approaches. So that includes the introduction of seed production technology. So we covered a quite broad uh, species of varieties, but not all are successful. Some are very successful, like a sea cucumber, like carbs. Uh, these are very successful, but for turbot, was not really uh, successful. Then the introduction of on farming technology also covered all different species and uh, the farming technology in the marine and inland freshwater environment. Again, some projects are only partially achieved their expected output. The, another important approach to support the country is to build a human capacity. So the project supported uh, the training of the technical people, manager people outside the country, and a local or conducted local training uh, in, in DPL Korea. Then the projects also focus on the demonstration of new seed production and uh, on growth culture technology. Uh, within the limited budget, the, the project also try to provide some equipment and the support the upgrading innovation of the facilities, uh, particularly the hatchery facilities. So with uh, many years of work with the government of uh, DPL Korea, we found some quite challenging constraints in developing aquaculture in the country. First, although the top priority set aquaculture as the, the, the important, uh, top authority set aquaculture as priority for improved animal food in the country, but we see not all the stakeholders are working jointly. So we often, we observe the disconnected effort in developed aquaculture. So basically they have the line ministry that is Ministry of Fisheries. They're trying to promote the production unit in the province and their uh, authority to develop aquaculture. Then the military also have their kind of aquaculture activities. Then there's a joint venture which is beyond, it's another ministry, they're managing that kind of a joint venture aquaculture. There's no exchange, no connection. So that is a quite big challenge. Then we also observe the disconnection between the academy, particularly the university and research and the production units. So that is also partially due to the, the in-country system. Uh, obviously, there's a lack of substantial aquaculture investment. So there's difficulty to maintain the facility, even to have sufficient capital to operate the production unit. So what they're managing, they get small funding from the government. Then now they're trying to uh, also market some of their products to get a revenue to keep the production going. Uh, due to the, some reform in the government cup policy. Uh, there's clearly a lack of good equi equipment, quality products input, particularly lack of seed, brew stock, quality feed, and feed ingredients, chemicals. Fuels, construction materials, particularly steel and cement, are very much in short. Uh, the infrastructure supporting the aquaculture sector, particularly the power supply, transportation infrastructure are also very weak. There's a lack of sector data collection and compilation to support informed national planning and decision making. FU also formulated a comprehensive aquaculture development project that is supported by the Republic of Korea Trust Fund project. So in 2015, the government of uh, uh, Republic of Korea provide a grant of $150,000 to FAO for formulating a long-term project that's covering 2017 to 2022 to mainly to build the capacity for aquaculture sector in the country. So in 2016, FAO dispatched the project formulation mission of two officers and five international consultants to the country. So finally, a comprehensive aquaculture capacity building program was formulated through extensive interaction, consultation with the Ministry of Fisheries, research and education institutions and field studies. So uh, the project basically defined the output 
uh, outcome of the project. So I don't want to read all these FA languages. Basically, mainly focus on the capacity building, uh, on the infrastructure facility improvement, and eventually try to improve the production of the major commodities by 300%. Eventually, the total project proposed 34 million uh, 700,000 US dollars. So that was originally hoping uh, the Republic of Korea will be a major donor for that kind of support. So the project set the, some target for the different uh, species commodities uh, try to achieve in, in terms of the production by 2020. So we can see that the, the final target is nearly 500,000 tons, uh, but largely is seaweed. Uh, shellfish, marine fish, and freshwater fish are rather limited uh, in terms of the production increase. So that I can see at that time, uh, the pro aquaculture production level was actually rather, rather low here. So that's quite a huge gap. Then FAO also prepared an overview on the aquaculture sector in the DPR Korea in 2018. So in early 2018, we see there was some reduced tension in the Korean peninsula. There was a hope for increased assistance from international society to DPR Korea in addressing its challenge in food security and economic development. So FAO uh, Regional Office in, for Asia and the Pacific carried out a full scope review study to the aquaculture sector uh, in, the, in the country that covered basically crop, fisheries, aquaculture, and forestry. So uh, the FAO Region Office uh, sent three officers and four international consultants to the country that extensive extent interaction with the relevant government authorities, institutions, and uh, some visit visits. So eventually, uh, the mission produced a comprehensive review on the sector policy structure production, related supply chain, challenges, gaps, development target, and expected priority areas of the, for the external uh, assistance in individual sectors. So based on that review, uh, the Ministry of Fisheries, they identified some priority areas for external uh, assistance uh, expected from the outside in developing aquaculture sector. So that includes the adoption of new technology and strengthened capacity for broodstock development and production of large size uh, freshwater sea fish species for pond culture, for, for page culture, and also for stocking in, in open water bodies. The adoption of new technology and strengthened capacity for mass seed production of marine fin fish, mollusk, to meet the demand of various cultural system and marine stock enhancement. So they also want to enhance their uh, natural population of some important species. The in introduction of good strain and cultural seaweed species such as Japanese kelp and the lava. Uh, introduction of modern technology, they are very much in, uh, keen on that one for marine fin fish farming, including cage farming and industrial farming to improve the aquatic animal health management and control of aquatic animal disease, technology for fish processing and value adding. So they're also hoping they can export some of their products to the neighboring countries, particularly to China. And eventually, and last but not least, to develop aqua feed industry. That is a very, very fundamental for the aquaculture developments. So finally, uh, what are the prospects for the collaboration with the Republic of Korea and FAO in supporting the effort of the country to develop aquaculture? Uh, we clearly understand that improved nutrition and the livelihood in the DPR Korea will contribute to the sustainability and also the peace in the peninsula and in the region. So aquaculture can significantly contribute to the animal food supply and the job opportunity and the income of the people in the country. So uh, in all sense, Republic of Korea is in the best position and the interest to work with FAO to assist the country to develop their aquaculture sector. And uh, through the following kind of uh, uh, collaboration, transfer, transfer of modern aquaculture technology, industrial aquaculture, feed manufacture, gen genetic res uh, resources sharing, and health management, aquaculture environment control. 
this, uh, the Republic of Korea has a very good technical uh, advantage. To share the experiences and the knowledge in the food quality safety standard, environmental impact management, and also to probably to provide the supplied aquaculture equipment and facilities, and to help the country to develop a technical and a managerial capacity uh, building. And the, the last but not the least, the investment and a joint venture for the aquaculture production and the supporting infrastructure. Uh, that's super important, uh, which also demand a huge uh, kind of financial input. So that's my, my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Back to you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Miao. It is a very rare opportunity to directly listen to who had actually worked with the DPRK. In that sense, priority areas of the DPRK and the prospect for collaboration between ROK and FAO is quite valuable. Once again, thank you. Thank you. The last but not least, we are turning again to the sea, but the adjacent seas of the Korean Peninsula, while having our focus on marine fisheries. Mr. Bak Jae-yoon, a senior data scientist at Global Fishing Watch, will deliver his presentation regarding illegal commercial fishing activities surrounding the Korean Peninsula. Mr. Bak, please turn on your microphone. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, I share my screen first. Um, Please let me know if you don't see my screen. Um, I, I present in Korean. Um, so, turn on your uh, interpretation, please. Um, Hello everyone, this is the 2021 Korea Global Forum for Peace. Uh, thank you for inviting me. And it is my great pleasure to meet other speakers and discussants, and I would like to extend my appreciation to the Ministry of Unification. I am a senior data science at Global Fishing Watch, uh, Jayun Park, and I am responsible for the data-driven monitoring using the satellites. And as you know, uh, fishing is very active in Asia, and there are top 10 fisher, uh, fishing countries in the region. Uh, so we are creating cooperation relations through Global Fishing Watch, and we would like to support those countries and enhance it. Uh, transparency. In this sense, uh, illuminating dark fishing fleets in North Korea, uh, that is the title of the paper, and it was uh, released through Science Advances. And uh, Director uh, Lee jong Song of uh, the Korea Maritime Institute is a co-author. So I'd like to make a presentation on this paper, and I'd like to show you the outcome, technology we used, uh, the background, and the implication between the Korea and North Korea relations. First of all, Global Fishing Watch is a non-governmental uh, a non-profit organization and independent organization. The goal is increasing the transparency. Uh, we visualize uh, the map of the fishing activities in almost in uh, real time, and we provide the data using AI, big data, and satellite Im imageries. Uh, we are analyzing the data, and up until now, well, we can uh, provide the monitoring data of uh, almost 70,000 uh, vessels uh, in a mid and large size, and our goal is sharing the information among countries on big data uh, big and mid-sized uh, ships, and usually we are using the data called the automatic in, uh, identification system to provide the monitoring data, and we also work with the government to share the information. First of all, uh, let me introduce the background of this uh, study and the reason that we focus on this uh, specific region. 
Global Fishing Watch is using the AIS data, and we also use the imagery data of the satellite to comprehensively monitor on the current situation. And we wanted to have a specific area to monitor, but North Korea was one of the unmonitored area, and uh, information sharing is lacking in this region. And in the region, including the Korea Maritime Institute, uh, there are many experts expressing concern, and the concern was also reported through media. The problem is uh, there are vessels that are called as dark fishing fleets, and these are making us difficult to monitor. These dark uh, fishing fleets do not uh, send the signal or they cannot be detected in the monitoring system, and these are uh, on authorized vessels and their fishing catch are not controlled by the government. So overall monitoring and governance of the uh, vessels are very difficult. So due to the lack of information and lack of trust among countries and the existence of the dark fishing fleet, we wanted to uh, scientifically identify the existence of dark fishing fleets, and I believe that that can be applicable to many regions around the world. Uh, we monitored uh, the East Sea of the Korean Peninsula using AIS, and it seems that there is no fishing activity. But Korean uh, Maritime Police says that uh, many vessels are moving from China and they are moving to North Korean Sea. And we monitored two types of vessels. The first one is a pair of trawler. Uh, the length is almost 30 meters, and uh, they're usually working in pair, and they have a net, and they are trawling almost all fish. And the second vessel is called as a lighting vessel. So they uh, use uh, the lighting to gather fish. And usually they are very large size, uh, and the length is uh, 60 meters. Uh, and mainly they are catching uh, squid. Squid is one of the most popular uh, fish in Korea, and it is a top three export goods in North Korea. And obviously China is consuming the largest volume of squid, and they also export. But squid is not limited to the Northeast Asia. In the U.S., uh, the export of squid increased to 80,000. The problem is this squid since 2003, for almost 15 years, the fishing catch decreased by 80%. Sometimes we call this as gold squid because it is very expensive and hard to get in the restaurant. Due to the geopolitical tension, a common uh, and joint management of fish has not been available in the Northeast the Asian region. That's why the activity of the dark uh, fishing fleet uh, has worsened the situation and uh, fishers got the damage. In our study, we used these four uh, data sets to understand the scope of this fleet and their activity. Individual data show the partial uh, activities, but when we combine all these data, we can have a comprehensive understanding of the fleets. Uh, these technologies were used uh, for a while 
But、uh, this was the first time that we identified the activity of dark fishing fleet, and this study was made possible thanks to the partnership with many organizations, including、uh, public agencies and、uh, the satellite companies. Then,、uh, let me briefly introduce the technology. On the left top,、uh, this is the satellite imagery, which、uh, visually、uh, shows us、uh, the image of、uh, the vessels. These、uh, pair trawlers were detected、uh, by using artificial、uh, neural network. On the、uh, screen,、uh, these are the paratrollers detected by machine learning technology, and on the right side top, they detect the mid-sized vessels. And the benefit is they are not affected by weather. And on the left bottom, we can、uh, find the lighting vessels alluring the squid with lighting. And right bottom, AIS shows the movement and the trail of the vessels. We can also understand、uh, from where the vessel moved to where, and we also use the high-resolution optical imagery to show even more clear evidence. Here, I would like to emphasize that we use the different images, and we also use the algorithm and machine learning to. Handle the different data, and big data was also used. And that is the major achievement in the study. And partner companies and organizations helped us to understand the fishing activities, especially illegal fishing activities in Northeast、uh, Asia, and about 1,000 vessels、uh, were. Active in North Korean water, despite the sanction, and their catch was similar to the combined catch of South Korea and Japan, and it is estimated as 800 billion Korean won worth. Then you may ask why we focused on the North Korean water. The UN Security Council. Adopted the resolution unanimously in 2017 after the nuclear missile test, and now the fishing activity is banned. However, every year we can monitor our vessels working in North Korea. So this East Sea is the area where、uh, there is、uh, no joint effort, and due to the tension, information sharing is limited, and comprehensive maritime assessment was difficult. So for now, it is very difficult to continue in a sustainable manner. And through this study. We were able to see that about 3,000 vessels were active in the Russian water. So the small vessels from North Korea were swayed from North Korea, and they were active in Russian water. As you can see on the left top. These are small-scale、uh, wooden vessels. Compared to the commercial vessels, they are smaller, and these vessels are not、uh, suitable for long-range、uh, navigation. And every year in Japan, they identify ghost ships. They are heavily damaged, and sometimes there are dead body inside. In 2018, they identified more than 200 ghost ships.
So this study showed that uh, the number of the vessels working in the water and the ghost ships have uh, uh, close co-relations. And it is also affecting the safety of uh, uh, fishers. That shows that why we need to fight against these illegal fishing activities. After releasing this paper, there were significant change. First, Global Fishing Watch and Korea Monitoring uh, Maritime Institute are continuing its monitoring activity on North Korea. And between RK and DPRK, a cooperation for illegal fishing is now moving ahead. And in the second half of 2020, after the release of the paper, in the North Korean water, the number of the illegal fishing vessels has decreased. And according to our monitoring, the number of the vessels working in the North Korean water is drastic particularly are decreased. And I believe this can provide an opportunity for inter-Korean cooperation. In 2018, uh, during the summit, uh, the two leaders agreed on the, the activity against illegal fishing by having joint water. And in order to ease the tension between the two uh, Koreas, we can work together in the softer area. And sustainable management of squid is also related to the management of maritime asset and it can enhance the livelihood of fish, uh, fishers. And this also can be applied to the west coast as well. This study outcome shows that intergovernmental cooperation is necessary and information sharing is required. Squid is transborder uh, crop, so in order to address the problem uh, like this, uh, intergovernmental cooperation is required. So satellite monitoring technology and scientific data based uh, decision making and discussion are required. In this sense, this technology should be applied around the world to provide scientific data. Last but not least, least, in each region, we can combine this technology with expertise to uh, reduce the illegal fishing and protect the maritime assets. With this, let me conclude my presentation and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Park. The research result of his team attracted public attention when they published it because it is very meaningful in a sense that they provided scientific evidence to the hidden or suspected illegal activities related to the SDG 14 and against the UN sanctions. Thank you, Mr. Park. Now it is time for discussion and I will pass the microphone to Dr. Kim jong do Vice President of Research at the Korea Maritime Institute. Good evening. I am Kim jong do who is the Vice President of KMI. And we have three wonderful presentations. And from the FAO perspective, and also we were able to hear the Dao Pops activity and the possible cooperation we can do. And also, as an independent body, Global Fishing Watch was giving us the information based on their paper about the illegal fishing. That was really interesting. In this session, we have three discussants. And we have Mr. Jaliga Berenheit from the Hans Jaider Foundation. We have Dr. Chun Jae Chan from the National Institute of the Fishery Science, and also we have Dr. Lee Jung Sam from KMI. 
In the interest of time, I can give you seven to eight minutes for each of the discussant. And for the presentation, you can make a comment or you can suggest for the peaceful cooperation based on the marine maritime and the fisheries cooperation. First comes to first, I would like to give the opportunity to Dr. Jeliga first, please. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kim, and thank you, uh, Dr. Yoon, for inviting me here to this very exciting uh, session. I hope you can hear me well, and uh, I want to comment on all three papers with something from our experience in working in DPRK, because we worked there since 2003 now, uh, with one of the closest partners being the Environment Ministry, MOLAB, and also we worked since 2009 in Rasson. And we uh, want to start with the issue of aquaculture. We had uh, ourselves a study uh, in 2012 on aquaculture with the former Ministry of Trade of DPRK and visited dozens of sites for seawater and partly freshwater aquaculture. And that time we felt rather optimistic because we saw the, the aquaculture was not only a thing of feeding the own population, which was clearly an important goal, but also it was a very strong issue of trade. Generally, as uh, it was said in the presentation, there are excellent marine resources. And for some time, uh, DPRK or North Korea could participate in markets with very high prices like Japan or South Korea. And I think that made absolute sense. And uh, we visited, for example, this place for um, Bem Chang'o, uh, snake eel in the West Sea, Nampo. And practically the only thing they did, they exported that to Incheon, to South Korea. Many of these places were owned by the military, probably all of them. Uh, and we see that and we saw that in the photos which were presented there, that when Kim Jong-un turns up there in this to lord the bumper harvest on, on um, fish, it's usually in military places. And what I found a little depressing uh, was that still today the supporting infrastructure for aquaculture is so poor. And that means we have just big problems like power or road conditions, which are maybe difficult to solve. But uh, already 10 years ago, when there were market opportunities, there were small-scale industries developing. For example, I remember when we were in Nampo, um, besides the uh, factories for fish, there was an uh, ice factory for cooling. And there was a factory, a small room only, for producing styrofoam for packing the fish. So there was, in that time, a certain tendency that... Um, uh, aquaculture really could provide not only uh, additional nutrition to the people, but also could uh, help the country to develop. But all that changed from the mid-2010s and especially 2017, when the sanctions included also seafood. And I see there's only been very little and slow progress because there's no more money poured into the sector from abroad. And that was felt very strongly, I think, in Rason, where there were so many small and medium-sized companies dealing in seafood. And though there was criticism sometimes that a lot of the value added did not really happen in Rason, that is, uh, Chinese, Korean Chinese traders usually went in, took the seafood out, and the value added was then in Yenji or in Hunchun. But it was very necessary still, and they bought machines, they brought new diesel um, motors for the for the vessels, etc. And all of this doesn't happen anymore. Now, the, the humanitarian approach certainly is very laudable, and it's great if the FAO can work on that or so. Uh, and I think it was very important that the FAO did not only do um, uh, some, some model projects, but really focused on a national strategy, but still without capital, it will not develop as it could the sector. And capital will only come in if North Korea can be integrated in markets for um, aquaculture again. And the second short comment on the fishing fleet, that was a very, very interesting and, and but it's very technical uh, presentation and I cannot comment on that one. But I want to share one observation. I was this spring in Yongpyongdo uh, in the inner Korean border there's this beautiful observatory and you look over the NLL and into North Korea 
and I saw actually the same in Bangnongdo, but not so clear. Uh, maybe it was two kilometers off the southern coast. There was a demarcation line, and all the time they were hoovering around 10 to 15 Chinese fishing vessels, fishing in South Korean waters, and whenever the South Korean Coast Guard came, they just jumped over to the North Korean side. There was a North Korean Coast Guard, but they didn't do anything. And South Korea all day placed a message there by tape telling them that it's illegal to fish there, but they don't give a damn. They don't care at all. And we asked soldiers there, people on, on the country, and they said, well, it's like this all year round. And I think I want to challenge our uh, South Korean colleagues here a little bit. I guess it's also a little bit a question of political will. Do you want to challenge China on this one? I mean, it's very clear. These fishing boats don't come from any other country. They are Chinese. They have Chinese um, identification marks on them. But nobody really wants to tackle this if they don't want to mess with a big neighbor. So that, I guess, is another problem. But in, in that respect, I find this study very, very enlightening and very, very important. Because if we know more about it, and clearly the illegal fishing in, in, in Korean waters and also in DPRK waters is very, very severe. I think it can help us solve it, but we also need a political will there. And uh, on the SDGs and the NowPub initiative, um, we are ourselves working a lot in DPRK on nature protection issues and are in the EAFP and uh, closely collaborate with YSLME and other initiatives there. And I, th I think it was wonderful to see what y you did until now. And I just want to add one aspect that I find a little bit um, worrying regarding um, EPRK. Uh, when you went to Bengnongdo or Yompyongdo or other places three, four years ago, it was very rare. You sometimes found North Korean litter. It happened, but not much. Now we go, um, and I remember we had a seminar on garbage management in 2012 in DPRK with an expert. Um, we were thinking of making biogas, and basically the, that time, the result and the consensus was there was too few garbage to use it really in any way. There was not enough garbage. But uh, we also go regularly to Kosong in Kangwondo, and I was there two weeks ago, and whenever I go there, I bring a plastic bag and I collect garbage. You wouldn't believe how much litter from DPRK was there. All plastic. To some extent, it substituted Chinese garbage, plastic bottles. Probably they already originated five or ten years ago in DPRK. They were just thrown away. But uh, now they are not uh, Chinese anymore, but they are really North Korean. And I think that's very worrying. On the other hand, maybe we can say if we want to tackle the issue of marine litter and microplastics. North Korea is still in a very early early stage. That might be another field where cooperation with them uh, might be really good, I think. Because now it became really a, a mass problem. It, it's not anymore an occasional souvenir you can get there, but it's really the whole, um, uh, the whole beach was covered with that. That's something which uh, was also very sad. Now, to care for fishing resources and, and, and marine and freshwater resources and food production always means also there are uh, contradictions everywhere in the world. Preservation of nature, economic development don't go well together. And I want to relay to you one very sad example I find from Rason. Uh, because we worked with North Korea very intensely to become a member of the Ramsar Convention on Wetlands, which is actually caring a lot for freshwater resources. And when they became a member in 2018, they designated two Ramsar sites, one in Mundok on the west coast, the Chongchongang, and one in Rason on the east coast. It was especially the lake area of the lagoon lakes. And we saw that in that time clearly as a great victory, if you want so, for nature protection, because we conducted a lot of surveys there. It was an extremely valuable area for different kind of uh, resources, marine resources, birds, uh, others. However, the same year when that was designated, a huge new actor appeared in aquaculture in that region, where really a huge area, which was part of the um, Ramsar site or adjacent to it 
was uh, bulldozed down. Then they um, uh, built huge canals, all from completely from concrete, and they built a, a hessam farm there, sea cucumber farm there. And as I know, I'm not really an expert, but sea cucumber is not easy to raise. You need a lot of antibiotics. There's only one re um, link to the sea, so probably all the water they take uh, will, the new water they need, the fresh water, will mean that the old water will be released basically into the lagoon lakes and from there into the sea. And uh, this is farm is growing year by year. And the worst part was that our partner, the Ministry of Environment of DPRK, didn't even know about that because they had very big difficulties. It's far from the uh, center. It's difficult to travel there. You cannot just enter the special zone or special city of Rason. So we see here it's really difficult. And But if we asked our local interlocutors, our local people from the city committee, they were very proud of it. Understandably, they said, this is development. We have now here a new huge farm and we, we generate income. So it's really very difficult. I mean, it's nice to talk about SDGs, but in a country as poor as North Korea, how can you reconcile different goals and very legitimate people who are freezing and hungry and uh, uh, need to produce something and you tell them just leave the nature as it is it cannot work like that the more i think it's important to work uh, internationally in that area for example with china and russia because they all um, basically share the same wetland area they are hunchun and, and primorsky and and rason and it would might be a um, yeah, uh, even politically feasible way to say we want to trilateral cooperation there and we can help then to develop resources in the way which is not so detrimental to the nature. I really hope this session can raise awareness of marine issues. And I think that increasing aquaculture resources is good, but to do so sustainably, you need access to market and outside financial aid. You need capital. It will not come from the country itself and i think the better we know the fishing fleets how they move and what they fish the more we can stop illegal fishing and finally we need to start the dialogue on more levels for example not only in the marine ministries or fisheries we, we uh, went with the more lab to hong kong and we looked at ways of organic aquaculture and met there people who do the same here in south korea in wando which so i think very very helpful so I think um, to create solutions for marine issues, we should even more try to reach out to different actors in DPRK. And in that sense, I want to congratulate our three presenters and thank you very much for your contributions. Thank you very much. You explained the current situation and the reality of DPRK. Thank you very much. And you also mentioned the SDG and the poverty issue, and you mentioned that it is closely related together, and we need to identify the way to address this problem. I agree with you. And as for the illegal fishing, the governance is insufficient now. In the future, uh, from the humanitarian perspective, uh, we need to work together with the DPRK by using the maritime as a medium. Thank you very much for your comment. And moving on, we would like to turn to Director Chun Jae-chun from National Institute of Fisheries Science. Please go ahead. It is my great pleasure to meet you. My name is Chun Jae Chun from National Institute of Fisheries and Science. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to this very important forum. And I would like to extend my appreciation to Vice President Kim Jong Duk uh, from KMI. This year marks the 100th anniversary of the. Uh, NIFS. We are focusing on the uh, aquaculture and uh, fishing. Uh, so, for the last 100 years, we have been studying this area, and today I would like to focus on the aquaculture. 
FAO, yeah. uh, from the FAO, we have Dr. Miao and I have a uh, total agreement with you. As for the aquaculture, uh, he has been contributing uh, to the development of agriculture in DPRK. And I believe you uh, thought a lot about the aquaculture industry in the DPRK. And I saw the development of aquaculture in China by visiting there many times. And I believe that development was also helpful for the development of aquaculture in DPRK. And as mentioned by Miao, FAO made lots of effort. And uh, there was many fruits, but at the same time, we also had many failures. And Dr. Miao mentioned uh, the food policy in China, and compared to that, I believe uh, uh, Dr. Miao was uh, disappointed uh, by the aquaculture industry in the DPRK. So, by working together, we can achieve development. In this sense, I would like to make several comments. First, the agri uh, aquaculture uh, cooperation uh, should be the objective, not the purpose, and we should be on the equal footing and it should be a pilot uh, project that can provide a hope. When we look at the inter-Korean projects, it is transcending the nation, religion, and races. So that is a humanitarian support, and that is the key word. As for the humanitarian aid, if we use this properly, I think we can achieve appropriate development. And one of the areas where we can pursue uh, this humanitarian aid is joint research. We can study together and share the outcome and spread the outcome. So when we pursue this joint study in a humanitarian sense, uh, then it would be more easier uh, for us to work together. Uh, the Minister of Agriculture, Minister of uh, Health and Welfare, uh, they are all pursuing the cooperation in fertilizer, railroad, and Kaesong industrial complex. There are many major policies. Compared to this, in the maritime area, there has not been uh, major uh, proposals for the inter-Korean projects. That was regretful. So through this forum, I believe it is meaningful that the KMI created a good opportunity. As I mentioned before, for the inter-Korean cooperation, we need to respect each other and uh, should be on the equal footing, and we also need to have a common goal. In this place, I would like to make small suggestions, uh, three suggestions actually, and I hope that can contribute to the inter-Korean cooperation. First, including the Aquaculture Technology Center, in the DMZ, how about we can create a complex for creating the Salmon Aquaculture Center? Salmon is a very suitable uh, fish, and we can use groundwater, which is rich in the DMZ area. By establishing the Aquaculture Technology Training Center, we can share our technology with the DPRK, and it will facilitate the cooperation with North Korea. Of course, uh, the initial phase will not be easy, but instead of pursuing a large-scale project, 
in the DMZ area and peace zone, we can first create the uh, aquaculture technology training center in a small scale. As for this uh, salmon, we can uh, create a DMZ special zone and based on Kusong and Wonsan in North Korea, Hamung, Chongjin, and Rajin, we can create a, a salmon belt. The initiative is already there, and by creating this belt, we can develop new salmon market in Northeast Asia market. In relation to salmon, when we look at the cooperation between the two Koreas, the project was initiated in 2001. From 2001 to 2004, in Gosong of South Korea and Anbyeon in North Korea, we released uh, the small fish of salmon. And from 2002 to 2008, by using Inter-Korean Cooperation Fund, we uh, created the a uh, feed uh, factory, and in 2018, for the uh, breeding ground, uh, we received a request from North Korea. From 2009 to 2016, uh, North Korea uh, showed us uh, the interest of producing salmon, in particular the Atlantic salmon, the length of the salmon, uh, they would like to produce a small uh, sized salmon, uh, about 10 centimeters, and they can cultivate it in the aquaculture farm. In Busan, Gangwon, and Gyeongbuk province, in Korea, uh, we are promoting a smart cluster and in Gangwon, Chungbuk, and Gyeongbuk provinces, there are 212 uh, aquaculture farms as well. So we have enough technology. And the National Institute of Fisheries and Science is also uh, providing a technological support such as vaccines, and we are planning to establish a supporting center by 2029. When we work together, I believe we can have good amount of production. Then, in the downstream, uh, we can also develop the processing industry and uh, feed industry as well. And based on this, when we build up, we can scale up and scale out. The second proposal is creating uh, the preservation center of crops. In our National Institute of Fisheries Science, we are marking the 100th anniversary this year. And in 1920, from North Korea, we collected a lot of specimens, and they can be utilized as important genetic resources for biodiversity study. So we would like to utilize that for our future biodiversity studies. For now, in Korea, we are introducing uh, a variety of species for study purposes, but only a small or no species have been introduced from North Korea. So, if there is a pure breed or uh, there are species that maintain good genetic characteristics, we can introduce them to Korea by introducing the genetic center and we can preserve the pure breed and that can uh, be a way to manage the pure uh, species in Korea. 
Uh, in DMZ, uh, there is a plant uh, center as well, and they are preparing for the inter-Korean exchange uh, in the agriculture sector. So in the maritime sector, we can do the similar thing. And third one is another joint project. As I mentioned, we can establish the technology training center uh, and we can find some uh, projects we can pursue on the equal footing. The aquaculture technology training center can be established in DMZ and we can identify the species where we have common interest and we can also uh, release uh, the species to the uh, nature or we can identify the species where we can study together. Previously, Dr. Miao said that due to the environment of North Korea, uh, they cannot uh, do aquaculture for many species. And usually they are growing the species that does not require any feeding. In this sense, I believe the importance can be placed on the eco-friendly aquaculture. In North Korea, Currently, we cannot provide enough feed. In this sense, aquaphonics uh, can be introduced to North Korea and we can provide a support. So my first proposal is uh, the technology training center. I emphasize this because it has been promoted from 2001, and North Korea is also strategically pursuing this. So I believe it is a low-hanging fruit. That's why I provided a lengthy explanation. I once again would like to extend my appreciation to Vice President Kim Jong-duk for inviting me, and this is the end of my comment. Thank you, Mr. John. Thank you. The humanitarian aid is really important, but for the consistent cooperation, we needed to be on the same page and we needed to have an equivalent position. You made three suggestions and about these three proposals and the suggestion we are going to have in detail discussion. And currently, the sanction is being applied to North Korea, and we are going to have more discussion so that we can find out the right solution. Thank you very much. Last but not least, from KMI, we have Dr. Lee Jong Sam. Please turn on the microphone, Dr. Lee. Good evening. I am Director of the Fishery Resources Research Department of KMI. Thank you very much for the wonderful presentations. And I am going to give some comments about the illegal fishing and the Global Fishing Watch is using the latest monitoring system to see whether there is a, any Chinese vessel that is illegal fishing on the northern side. And there are two types of the vessels, and for th those two types of the vessels, and they have the big data of the satellite images for the paratrollers and the lighting vessels, and they added the machine learning. In the past, it was impossible to monitor in detail, however, now accurate monitoring is possible. And as you know, the fishery catch is in its stalemate. The main reason for that is because too much fishing catch has been made and the fishing resources dropped significantly. To stop that, many of the countries are making lots of efforts. However, if the monitoring is not done, the illegal fishing 
is out of the scope for the management of the fishing resources and it can be a great threat to the fishing resources we have. So monitoring needs to be enhanced and many countries are making lots of efforts. As Mr. Park said, and Mr. Park's development is giving an awakening call for the previous monitoring system. In the past, monitoring was not done, so the relevant stakeholders were not able to have the negotiation about the prevention of the illegal fishing. And also, it was really impossible to have the exact analysis about the fishing resources. However, changes are on the way from China on the Eastern Sea, on the North Korean Sea. China expressed its willingness to prevent the illegal fishing from the Chinese side. And also on the Korean side for the squid fishing. And we are going to consider the capture that is done by the Chinese vessels. And this research is not just about the monitoring about the illegal fishing, but also it can be a great source for the fishing-related cooperation between the two Koreas. A few years ago, and there is a notice that the pair trawler will be prohibited. And because of the Chinese vessels, there has been lots of complaints from North Korea. So, at least North Korea stated that they are banning the pair trawlers from China. As such, and we needed to stop the illegal fishing and the massive catching. We needed to do it. To do that, we needed to have the tight monitoring about the illegal fishing. The monitoring about the illegal fishing can be a really great source of the information when we have the actual cooperation between the two sides because it can lay the foundation for the sustainable usage of the maritime resources. We need to have the accurate analysis and the clear distribution and we need to have the scientific and the transparent management for the usage of the resources. Let's say in the case of the squid fishing, when we have the cooperation between the two Koreas, we can have the satellite by the illegal fishing monitoring and we can prevent the illegal fishing from the third party and it can enhance the trust between the two parties, especially regarding the squad fishing. And when we have the cooperation between the two Koreas, some part of the water from the northern side can be utilized by the south. And if China is allowed to use a certain water, and in that case, Compared to the previous monitoring system, when we are using the satellite-based monitoring system, it can be more useful. So, in the future, if we can have more of these kind of the researches, we can have a sustainable management for the fishery and the maritime resources in the Northeast Asia. As two discussants mentioned, and <laughs> I'm going to cut short here. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Thank you. The illegal fishing monitoring can be really helpful and it can bring a good outcome and a positive outcome. Illegal fishing should be stopped. That's the goal that we need to work on. And we need to work together to prevent that from happening. And thank you very much for giving the good insights. We listened to all the three discussants. We have only two minutes left. I wanted to listen from the presenters, but we are running out of time. I would like to just ask, address one question. And if we have the opportunity, we can have more questions.
The question is directed to uh, the presenter Park Tae Yoon uh, from Global Fishing Watch. Due to the COVID-19, uh, I believe there is a change in fishing activities in North Korea. So, what was it? I'm not sure whether data is available, but uh, can you explain? After 2020, until now. I believe there is a drastic decrease of the Chinese illegal fishing in North Korean water and the illegal fishing activity of North Korean vessel in Russian water has also decreased by 90%. I believe it is because of the COVID-19 COVID pandemic is one of the factors because this happened after 2020. But we need to wait and see whether this will be a continued change. However, due to the changing circumstances, now fishing activity is drastically decreasing. I believe there are many reasons, and one of them uh, can be coronavirus. And once we have a systemic uh, governance, I believe we can come up with even more effective outcome. The time's up. And we had three presentations and three discussions, and it gave very important inputs. We will compile this to promote uh, the mutual development and cooperation in uh, Korea. With this, let me conclude the session, and thank you very much once again, all the presenters and the